You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again to commence our broadcast week here on the old Options Insider Radio Network. Yes, it is time for episode one of the Option Block with the cool kids call. The old OB, my name is Mark Longo from the aforementioned network as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting TheOptionsInsider.com, all sorts of cool stuff, but even more over there with these new updated earnings trade reports. You guys could spend hours literally just going through the archives of all that stuff and searching for your favorite tickers. We love you all, so it's all completely for free. I defy you to find a big house or bank out there that will do the same for you. They'll charge you a ton for it, or they probably won't do it at all because I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. (laughs) What the hell is straddles? Uh, so, yes, check it out. The options com earnings move and or should the options news and articles tab. Then go to the earnings move tab and you're good to go there. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond the on demand, which we're on, of course, it's about every platform under the sun these days on demand. You want to join us live or get the exclusive shows on Tuesdays and Fridays. And of course, get entered into that. I'm still looking at this. We send out a bunch of crates. There's still a mountain of stuff here just in the corner of the studio listeners you want to get access to the awesome pro trading crates then the options slash pro is the place to go to learn more about all that and of course however you listen live after the fact we don't care we don't judge just hit us up questions comments insights pearls of wisdom we do love to hear from all of you folks out there and before we commence our show before we welcome on my cohorts my compatriots you know how we do things here listeners we have to commence our broadcast week in style, it is time to name that 80s wrestler. Dare I say it? I think we got a good one this week. Here we go. If you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, you better read the signs, respect the law, and order you some hard times. You'll be serving hard times. You know the make you walk. A fun one, a good one. You notice I had to strategically mute it there 
a little bit because, uh, yeah, they actually say the name. Uh, oh, some other inappropriate things in there as well. So old school WWE, a little bit different there. Let's go around the horn now. First, let's go out to, I should say first, but only Uncle Mike not joining us today. He had to go on assignment. He'll be back with us on Thursday. So we'll have our strategy block there on Thursday, listeners. But we are going out to the volatility, nay, the options, nay, the 80s wrestling mecca known as Austin. I mean, he lives down the street from the freaking Undertaker. What more do you need? He is the greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. A, welcome back to the program. And B, can you name that person who has an awesome tune that I had to strategically mute to keep his name from being said, sir? I mean, Mark, this, this one was maybe too easy. Cobb County, Georgia. Come on. Everyone knows who this is. Uh, I liked his original uniform better than when he came back in, like, the all-black SWAT outfit. Yes, um, definitely original okay. 80s of this person is, I won't say the name, because just for just for formality, but yes, definitely the original 80s incarnation, yes. Yes, far better, and, you know, they, they he was at, at they, I believe he actually worked as a security guard in a prison, and that was the background story there, and of course... Uh, we'll all remember when he took out the rock with his, uh, his, uh, nightstick. Uh, we of course are talking about the big boss man, the big boss uh, man, everyone's himself. favorite <laughs> crime fighting wrestler, the big boss man. You know, I was talking with my uh, my son this weekend. He's our in-house wrestling aficionado these days. And I, he, I asked him, who should we do this weekend? He was stunned. He was flabbergasted that we had not yet done the big boss man. And I was like, you know what? I agree. That is an oversight on our part. And he also has an awesome tune. It's just a fun tune. Uh, it <laughs> it's actually a song. Unlike so many wrestlers today where it's just kind of random music. Again, the old the, Jimmy Hart working on these, making the use, used to write a lot of these tunes back in the day. So he was quite the uh, man of many talents. Uh, also a little bit of an explicit tune. I'll probably have to mute it there. <laughs> I think it's safe to say the early, early days of the WWF, not quite in the same I don't know. I think, I think to call them not politically correct is, is an understatement, sir. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say that uh, the what was politically correct then is certainly not politically <laughs> correct now. In fact, if, I'm not sure they could even create a big boss man type character with everything going on right nowadays. Yeah, that would be rough. But, that would be rough. I, I, I'm not sure yeah. if you've ever paid for the WWE Network or I think the new whatever the newest incarnation, Peacock, whatever it is. But if you do so, you will see if you go to the archives, there's the first thing you see is a huge splash page. Like some of this content does not reflect our views of today or something. So even they disclaim it. I think even Peacock, I think when they bought the archives, which was a big deal for WF recently, they I think they even took some out. So yeah, it's uh it's intriguing. And even that song, if yeah, you have to listen to it, but it's in there. It's funny. Uh, as we keep on rolling, we could talk 80s wrestling for ages, including the boss man. Unfortunately, yet another of our 80s wrestlers who is past tense. But you got to love the boss man as we head on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down, surprise, surprise, what the heck is trading? We got an, a mixed start to the week. Maybe a little less mixed. Now we're heading more. It's still S&P has kind of been flirting with kind of unched all day. Unched slightly to the upside. Unched pretty much slightly to the downside. Not really doing a heck of a lot. Uh, the NASDAQ's been a little bit more firmly in the red. A little bit less in the red now. Off about two tenths of a percent. S&P 0.01. So almost literally unched. And uh, the Dow up about a tenth of a tenth of a percent. So pretty much all day long we've had at least one index in the red. And usually one or two others flirting around with the green out there. So kind of a mixed start to the week as we still are deep in the teeth of earnings season here. Coming into showtime, we had VIX north of the 17 handle. It was about a 17.3. It has ticked shy of the 17 handle now to about 16.90. That actually puts it down about almost half a point from where it was on Monday's show. Yeah, pretty much almost, yeah, about 0.6 from where it was on Monday's show. Coming into showtime, we had VBIX at about a 115, actually up a point from where it was on the Monday, on Thursday's show, our last show for this one anyway. Uh, VXX was at about a 20 and three quarters. That puts it down about three quarters of a point from this time last show. And UVXY was at a 15.75, puts it down about a quarter of a point. Vol Q at about an 1875, down about half a point from where it was 
this time last week. So, Mr. Meatball, hey, I'm glad you're on the show today because if it was the Rock Lobster, I felt like that would have been a waste of the big boss man. Can you concur? He had no idea who the hell that was. Even though the song says his name specifically, it says the big boss man. He never would have picked up on it. So I'm glad you were here to at least regale us. If you have any other memories of the big boss man, have at it. And then B, what's lined up your tape and the tape of your crazies this week, sir? So we were heading for, uh, you know, what seemed like a relatively decent day. Uh, could have gone up, up really potentially more than we're, you know, flattish now. Two things are driving the market lower. Uh, notably, Tesla is to below a thousand bucks now, uh, down 4%. Elon Musk talking about selling more stock. We know he's got more stock to sell, uh, because he said he was going to sell 10% of his holdings and he has not so executed all of that piece yet. Uh, he has about another, what, 15, 20 billion dollars that he could sell. Um, which will, uh, which should be a, some sort of cap on Tesla. The other thing is midday, the bond market absolutely puked. Uh, we saw, uh, TLT, which had already been down, really take it on the chin. Bond, long bond, uh, getting sold off today. The 10 year note getting sold off today. So, uh, the puke of the bond market brought the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, significantly lower. So the thing driving the NASDAQ, you've got Tesla down, and then you have interest rates uh, moving higher as the bond market pukes a little bit. And um, on the other hand, VIX uh, is now starting to fall off. We're starting to see, you know, the market maybe consolidate. I would not be surprised if we got a little bit of a rally into the rest of the day. But uh, just a kind of interesting morning. Not a lot going on. And then, you know, behind the scenes, uh, the move in the bond market. And, and I do want to talk about this a little bit, Mark. VXTLT, we don't talk about it very often. It is the VIX of TLT. It is trading at a two point premium to the VIX itself. That's right. The bond market is more volatile than the stock market, according to option players. Uh, that is not usually something that happens and is something that, you know, I think it should be, you know, making the ears of all traders burn a little bit as um, this is that is not something we normally see. And if the bond market is saying, hey, we've got some volatility ahead, what does that mean for the stock market? Ah, uh, yes. Good old VXTLT. Not a, again, you mentioned. Not a thing we talk about here on the show. We actually were talking a lot more about a Treasury's vol on Twifo recently. So that has been flirting into the conversation more frequently of late. Of course, I use vol when you get out into the Treasury curve a little bit more in air quotes. You're talking a four out in the 10 year and dare I say it, maybe an eight on the 30 year. So a different beast when you're talking Treasury vol. But you're right. It is kind of significant when you're talking usually a more anemic part of the market from a vol perspective suddenly uh, roaring to life versus VIX. That probably is an indicator to watch. I know TLT is still your preferred vector for all things fixed income. Do you watch anything else from a fixed income perspective these days, sir? Yeah, I mean, the the whole role of, of what's happening in inflation, we've got a lot going on, right? We've got inflation coming on. The Fed is tapering. Uh, we've got a lot of debt. Uh, what is, you know, the bond market is set. The Fed's still buying $100 billion on, in bonds a month, but um, you know they're going to be winding that down. And what is going to happen to the bond market over the next couple of, you know, the next six months? If the bond market starts really selling us, uh, if bond market sells off and yields start to pick up, uh, that is, you know, bond, the old saying, bonds down, stocks up, is not true when yields are, you know, one and a half, two percent. Uh, the bond market and stock market actually tend to uh, correlate then. So maybe some some bad uh, some bad omens for uh, the S&P and notably the Qs, which are more interest rate sensitive than the S&P itself. There we go. Let's see what's sensitive from a volume perspective out there today. What kind of numbers are we putting up out there? And actually surprisingly decent for the day. If you just glance at the S&P and you thought it was effectively unched, you'd say not a lot going up, but we're actually seeing – Some paper out there, I think this evolution trying to find its footing, you know, is it a sell-off, is it a rally, is it unched? All that's contributing to a little bit of flow out there today. VIX coming into showtime, actually as of a few minutes ago, 
had about 283,000 contracts, so closing down 300,000, which in this environment where you know the ADV is kind of hovering a little bit north of 400K, that's actually a lot of paper. Uh, so interesting stuff out there in VIXLAND. SPY also doing pretty decent numbers for this time of day right now. 2.81 million contracts on the tape. The ADV is about 4.7 million out there. The S, closing in on a million contracts on a day when it's unched. That's interesting. 967,000 contracts. That's nothing to sneeze at out there in the S. The ADV is about a little bit shy of 1.5 million out there. The Q's also putting up some numbers. 861,000 contracts. The ADV about 1.5 million out there. And uh, small caps, all, at least through the IWM lens, looking pretty active as well. 371,000 contracts. The ADB out there has exploded in this in the last couple of weeks. It's up to 757,000. Typically, it would be around 500-something thousand. So that 371 number looks a little bit different when you look at the more recent frame of reference outside of this you know, crazy burst we've seen in the last couple of weeks in small caps. The ADB should be around 550, 580. So 371, a pretty active day. Speaking of active, let's go out to the top 10. Let's see what's dominating the tape out there. It's kind of fun to rack these numbers up (laughs) these days because you never know what you're going to get out there. We're in the middle of earnings season, of course, still. We have a lot of other crazy stuff popping off in the broad market. So you never know what you're going to get. The top 10, kind of like a box of chocolates, outside of a few names that you know are kind of stalwarts out there these days. You're probably going to see NVIDIA out there. You're probably going to see Tesla and Apple out there. And maybe throw in an AMC or an AMD, one of the symbol twins. But outside of that, so maybe let's say half of the top 10 is is up for debate <laughs> on any given show. Number 10 today, again, it cost you 312,000 contracts. So for a kind of eh, day, you're seeing a lot of paper. That's, that's nothing to sneeze at, 312,000 to break into the top 10 listeners. That gets you to Tilray. So we're back out to the cannabis sector. I do believe Sundial and some others had some earnings of late. So we're seeing a lot of, a lot of earnings, a lot of action out there. In that part of the space, Sundial is actually off four cents today. What is good old Tilray up? Tilray is up about nearly 5%. So interesting. Where do you play? If you play in the sector, listeners, what is your preferred name? Are you like a little bit of all of the above? Do you not touch it? Hit us up. Let us know. Number nine, one half of the symbol Twinology. AMD out there, 312,000 contracts. Number eight, NVIDIA, 316,000 contracts. You know, things are getting so crazy out there between, you know, for the graphics cards and the chip shortage. And, of course, people wanting to mine crypto. So they're getting the graphics cards out there as well. We're hearing stories of truck hijackings <laughs> for graphics cards. So it's it's nuts how desirable of a commodity these graphics cards are. So that means NVIDIA going to be hanging out there for a while at 316,000 today. Number eight. Number seven, the other half of the symbol Twinology. Dear, I say it, perhaps the reigning king of the meme stocks out there. Some folks may say GameStop. Uh, It is AMC, 326,000. Number six, when I was just talking about Sundial, who they have earnings, I knew it was recently. It was last Thursday they popped off. They're at 387,000 contracts. So Tilray, number 10, Sundial, number six. A lot of action in their neck of the woods today. Number five, it's four. I I think we can safely say this is a meme stock now. This thing's up another quarter, 1972 they're at 389,000 contracts for number five. Of course, they also had a big stake in that Rivian IPO of late. So also contributing to a little bit of this upside love in Ford. People want to say, that's weird. You know, why doesn't Ford just do it themselves instead of investing in this startup that has pretty much yet to produce a car? But hey, it worked out from an IPO perspective for them. Uh, number four, we've got our friends across the street, Boeing, back in the action. I need to head over there again and check out, see if their cafeteria is back. I know they're not doing their big awesome Wednesday barbecue anymore. That was another victim of the pandemic. But perhaps, perhaps their cafeteria will be open again. Up 11 points, so nearly 5% today, 231.83 out there. So big moves out there in good old Boeing. Looks like they have a couple of different things going. They got some commitments for some of their fighters. And also they're saying air shows are coming back. And that's apparently a big driver for Boeing. <laughs> so there you go. Combo one-two punch out there for our friends across the street. Number three, Facebook. They're not across the street. They're <laughs> not here in Chicago. <laughs> uh, 552,000 contracts for number three. Number two. Yes, I said number two. It is Apple. 802,000 contracts. And then number one, as Mr. Meatball alluded to, they have the temerity to sell below $1,000. Yes, it's Tesla. 1.03 million contracts on the tape right now. 
Uh, they're at 990, almost 991 coming into show. Just ticked down 989. <laughs> this thing's moving off about, oh, about 43, almost 44 handles out there today. So there you go. Day that ends in Y. Some sort of controversy. I saw you had a bit of a dust up with Bernie Sanders on Twitter. So a lot of fun out there in Musk Watch. You can pretty much just spend all your time doing that. And I think it'd be a pretty sad time. But hey, if that's what you want to do with your days, have at it out there. Let's talk about what's not sad. That is options volume. We were so busy last week, listeners. We never even got to the numbers from our friends out there in OCC for October. Let's sink our teeth into those now, listeners. Like I've said many times, the question coming into this year was, can this crazy options palooza continue? The answer is a resounding yes. October volume up 29.7% from October of last year. Once again, every month this year has pretty much been the highest whatever month it is ever, and October falls into that category, the highest volume October in history, the fifth most active month in overall market history out there. Pretty much every month this year almost is vying for the number one spot, if not somewhere in the top five, it seems like these days as well. Total volume in October, 825 and a half million contracts. Total cleared volume to date. Now, this is interesting, listeners. Total cleared volume to date through the end of October, was 8.1 billion contracts. Why is that significant? Well, as you will recall, last year, 2020, was a ridiculous record-setting year. The total volume for the year, entire year of 2020, which was a bananas year, the craziest year ever in the history of the business until today, until now. 7.52 billion contracts. Now, to put that in some context, no one ever thought the business would ever hit that number. If so, or if they did, they thought it'd be many, many years distant. And instead, they hit it last year. And the options market has already surpassed it by a significant margin by the end of October. So that's what we're talking about when we say these things are crazy. We're beyond the realm of normalcy out there. These are completely uncharted waters from a vol from a skew and now from a volume perspective that's what we mean these are numbers that people who've been in the option space for a while probably never thought they would see <laughs> and yet it's almost become par for the course these days so yeah we, we beat october or should say beat 2020 already by the end of october just think about that that's it that is nuts let's drill down a little bit further here and get to clear a lot of stuff over there at occ uh, exchange listed options that's where we like to hang our hat 821 Million contracts up nearly 30% as well. Equity options drilled down a little bit further. 777 and a half million contracts. It's up 30% exactly from this time last year. That number includes cleared ETF options. If you pull those out, those were 232.8 million. It's up 19 and a half percent. Drilled down a little bit further. Index options, 43.6 million. That's also up 23%. If you've been, you know, you've been listening to the show for a while, you know, that's kind of been a bit of a dark spot sometimes, but they're up nearly 25% in October. Again, we talked about year-to-date volume, but year-to-date ADV now. What is the average daily volume of the options market right now? 38.6 million contracts. My goodness. And that's not enough. Even futures, which have been kind of the laggard of the bunch ever since the pandemic kicked off, 4.5 million contracts. That's up 33, almost 34% from October of last year. So Mr. Meatball, a lot to unpack there. I would like your thoughts on any of those numbers, if any of those surprised you. And also, you know, we were talking the end of last year, what a ridiculous year it was. Could we ever possibly hit that again anytime in the near future? A lot of things people thought probably not. It seemed like it was an aberrant year and yet already surpassed it by the end of October, sir. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we've just seen a crazy amount of retail trading continue to, to enter the markets. We see more and more regular investors, advisors, uh, you know, embracing options as markets get more and more expensive. Uh, big houses are jumping all over it. And uh, so I, I got to say, I'm surprised that we blew the doors off so quickly and so profoundly. But I'm not surprised that option volumes have continued to be as high as they are. Now, Mark, can we talk about something else real fast? Have at it, sir. The floor is yours. All right. Are you one of the people that has contributed to attempt to buy the Constitution? Is my question. <laughs> I have not, no. <laughs> so there is, and there, this, and uh, this will be something for your crypto rundown, I'm sure. 
they're releasing an NFT that gives you, if they're successful, shares in ownership of one of the original copies of the Constitution, the last one in private hands, that is going up for auction this week uh, to own a piece of uh, a cost, the Constitution historical document. I uh, I gotta say that uh, as as crazy stories go, this is this is up there. I like that is genius. You know, why sell it as one asset when you could break it up and sell it into a billion parts that are going to be worth 10 times more as an NFT? That's genius. Whoever is doing that, I tip my cat to them. That is uh, that is very clever diving into the an NFT of the Constitution. I love it. What will they think of next? Again, probably uh, we'll come up maybe a little bit later on our crypto rundown program. <laughs> are you going to buy a piece of the I mean, it kind of deflates it when, you know, you know, there's an actual one sitting there, you know, in the U.S. archives there. So you can just go see it in D.C. So do you what do you really have? But this is a copy, I suppose. It's not quite saying like I have a piece of, the, you know, the actual one everyone goes to see all the time, but still intriguing, still cool. And still, again, tip my cap to them. I've definitely seen worse NFTs go for a lot of money. So that one will certainly probably uh, probably make some make some noise. Speaking of making noise, earnings are making noise right now. We work popping off today. I don't think the numbers were that good. Surprise, surprise. Office sharing. Not a great business during a pandemic. <laughs> we can just look out our window here at the studio, listeners. We're in downtown Chicago. Every building we see, including the aforementioned Boeing, pretty empty. <laughs> Not a lot of need for additional space, let alone who wants to share and be next to other random people right now in an office. <laughs> People don't want to go to an office with people that they know that they work with on a regular basis, let alone random people in an office sharing environment. So, yeah, go figure. We work would have some problems. We work popping off today. Tomorrow, Home Depot, as well as Walmart and our old friend Stone Cold. Stone Cold back on the radar tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, we got Target, Big Box Retail Week, Lowe's. Uh, the aforementioned NVIDIA, will they rob more trucks? I guess we'll have to find out. Cisco's Victoria's Secret and Hewlett Packard Thursday. Baba, so going back out to China, Macy's, Kohl's, Petco, BJ's, Intuit, Bath and Body Works, and William Sonoma. Friday, we got the old Foot Locker. Earnings move reports today. Let's look at a few of those really quickly. We got uh, Home Depot popping off tomorrow for the bell. They were at 372. By the way, I should mention these are hot off the presses right before showtime. So this is all Current info for you listeners here. 372.63 is where the stock was run when they crunched the numbers. Uh, 11.63 is what they're pricing in. The past, they moved a little bit less than eight and a half bucks. So extra juice in Home Depot. Are we seeing the extra juice scenario here? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are we seeing more juice creeping in? Again, I'll get to the season in a second. You still see. Walmart, another big box retail. Dare I say it, the biggest. <laughs> uh, November 16th. So that's tomorrow before the bell as well. 147 and three quarters is where they were trading. They were pricing in 523 in the past. They moved 332. So two for two. Big box retailers pricing in more juice. Interesting. Stone Cold, our old friend, frequent odd block offender, Stone Cold. They have to be pricing in more juice. Let's find out, listeners. They were trading at 30 and a quarter as of this report. They're pricing in 308. In the past, they moved 278. So not bad. 30 cents. Roughly 10% there. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Lowe's. Also back to the big box retail. 263 and a third is where they were trading. They're pricing in 1131. Oh, they're bucking the trend. In the past, they've moved 1211. Let's see if Target can keep the dream alive. Target on the 17th before the bell. By the way, Lowe's also on the 17th before the bell. 260 even is where they were trading. 14 and a half is what they're pricing in. In the past, they moved 20 and a third. Also, Target pricing in dramatically less juice, whereas Walmart pricing in substantially more. Interesting. Did not expect such a they're just an array of offerings there in the big box retail. <laughs> Interesting. Cisco, let's go out to there. Uncle Mike's not here. We can talk about Cisco. They're on the 17th after the bell. 56.82 is what they were trading at. Two and a half bucks is what they were pricing in. In the past, they moved 310. So same deal there, a little bit lighter. NVIDIA. Okay, if any names got to be pricing in more. They're robbing the freaking trucks, for God's sakes. NVIDIA. Let's see what they got. 304 is where they were trading. They're pricing in 1730. In the past, they've moved 14 and a half bucks. So yeah. A little bit more juice. I mean, maybe not perhaps as much as you might think, but a decent amount nonetheless. You can't scoff at it. Baba, everything Chinese is volatile these days. Got to be more juice out there. Uh, November 18th, before the bell is when they are popping off. 166.81 is where they were trading. They're pricing in nine and a half bucks in the past. They've moved five bucks. Wow. 
almost doubling that straddle listeners. That's a lot of juice. But again, China is a huge X factor right now. So it's kind of hard to argue that isn't merited. BJ's 18th before the bell. 62 and a half is where they were trading. 412, they were pricing in the past. They moved 453. So light ball there as well. Interesting. What a strange, diverse array of offerings we have in the, in the big box retail out there. Uh, let's go to Macy's, the 18th before the bell. 30 and a half bucks is where they were trading. Three bucks is what they were pricing in the past. They moved a buck and a half. So ex- pretty much exactly double. Wow. A little bit more juice there. Into it. Can they keep this trend alive? Not exactly big box retail, but let's see if they're pricing in more juice. 627 is what they were trading at. Man, that's rich for, for into it. 24 and a half is where they were. Oh my goodness. They're pricing in 24 and a half dollars, listeners. In the past, they've moved 1663. <laughs> that's a lot of extra juice and into it. Wow. Okay. That's an interesting one. That's one that's going to be on my radar to keep an eye on there. And then let's see. What else do we have? Looks like Williams Sonoma, I believe. Yeah, we got Williams Sonoma here. Let's see. They were on the 18th after the bell. 210 and a half is what they were trading at. They're pricing in about 17 and a quarter. In the past, they've moved 2081. So lighter ball out there in the gentle lands of Williams Sonoma. Let's see how the season is shaping up. Remember, we've been hovering in the green for a while, listeners. Is that still the case? Let us find out. Right now, season holding at 104%. I believe it was 102% last time. So it actually has ticked up 2%. So you're making a whopping 4%, listeners. If you bought my mythical basket of straddles. <laughs> You made 4%. That's not bad. You're getting a little bit back after losing horrific amounts of money for pretty much the entirety of the pandemic. (laughs) Usually somewhere close to half your money every season. This season, you're making back 4%. So slowly but surely getting back there. Last week was pretty bananas, 106%. Man, that's uh, that's a a lot of juice. And the week before it, 124%. So I don't think we've ever seen a week that strong. Maybe even before the pandemic, I'll have to go look, I'll have to check with Matt to keep her all this data. That's a pretty strong week, 124%. My goodness. So we're seeing some action. By the way, listeners, a new updated version of the earnings trade report. I don't have time to go for that right now, but you can go check that out for yourselves. How is it working out buying straddles? How is it working out selling straddles? How is it working out buying and selling calendars? Go check out the earnings trades report. If you want to find out, it's like they entered some trades today. Long calendars in Rocket Mortgage and Home Depot. So there you go. Expiring on the 17th and the 3rd of December. So all kinds of different trades going up out here. You got to check out the report for yourself to see what's popping off. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go to learn more. Meanwhile, we got to go on out of here and into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Right, everybody, welcome to the odd block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get crazy. You know, before I unleash our eye of Sauron, Mr. Meeple, I know you're out there always running your Gamdar scans and seeing what's blowing the doors off. What's lighting up your Gamdar tape today, sir, before we unleash our eye of Sauron upon the world? Well, you know, from, from Friday, we saw a really, really big trade go up in Mosaic. Uh, and this one was a little bit of an eyebrow raiser. A customer bought. 50,000 of the March 50 calls sold 50,000 of the 60 calls paid 50 cents. Uh, you know, if you look at what's going on in ag and grains and things like that, it is a interesting, uh, a pretty interesting play. Uh, that went up pretty darn huge. Uh, some other names that are going up in the Gamdar. Uh, or the gamma radar, as we like to call it. Uh, you know, we've been watching fuel cell. We've been watching plug power, a lot of movement there. Um, interestingly, the Robin Hood borrow rate has really fallen off since they had that hack. Kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, and then, uh, Palantir has been extremely active along with Ford. Uh, Ford, uh, and Zynga. This is interesting. Zynga, we've seen just call spread after call spread after call spread. It's down today. But there was a lot of activity leading into their earnings, and we continue to see some some call buyers. 
There you go. The hot action off of the gamma. That's what the cool kids call the gamma. Who calls it gamma radar? Nobody. Everybody calls it the gamma. That's what the cool kids call it. Let's see what the cool kids have their eyes on today, especially our eye of Sauron. He's the coolest kid of all out there. Of course, big burning fiery eye. How could that not be cool? <laughs> and his gaze has fixed first. This might be a newcomer. I do believe it is to the odd block. This is Confluent Inc. Ticker symbol CFLT. They have subsidiaries out there in Pipeline, DB, and a few others. You might think Pipeline's, that's, uh, you know, Nat Gas or, or oil. But no, this is actually a data streaming firm. They went public earlier this year back in, looks like in June. They had one of these, you know, crazy tech IPOs. They rallied 30% on its first day. Were valued at more than $11 billion. They IPO'd at $36, opened at 44 got up as high as 47 So nice, nearly 31% pop. For them, just on the IPO day. And then uh, ever since then, been kind of on the rampage again, getting up to looks like it's a 52 week high of nearly 95 bucks, 94, 97, and then selling off again back to where it is right now, 82.33. Still well north of that IPO level. What I say it went public at about 36 bucks, 30, yeah, 36 dollars. So <laughs> pretty much almost a threefer out there, unless at least we're going to hit his 52 week high recently. So what is our Eye of Sauron found in this uh, extremely, shall we say, meme-heavy name out there of late? Looks like Mr. Rock Lobster, or should I say Mr. Meatball, I apologize. Mr. Meatball, not, not the trade I would have expected. Given this explosion of late, I would have thought maybe some crazy upside call flyer or something like that. Instead, we're seeing uh, put selling and not very meaty at all. <laughs> very small puts. In particular, it looks like the Nove 75 puts. So like I said, the stock's about 82.30 right now. So a little over seven buck out of the money puts here going up, not quite on the bid. They were a dime better than the bids. They got a little bit of price improvement here. They got them for 40 cents. They were 30 cent bid at the time. They sold nearly 8,000 of them, uh, 7,900. The vol, if you're wondering, listeners, still pretty juicy, 94%. So they're not getting no vol for these. They're getting a decent amount of vol and some premium, not a ton out there. Yes, you know my thoughts on these listeners when the stock has exploded like this one has from uh, then you turn around and sell puts. I don't care how far out of the money. This case, $7. These things could easily be $50 in your face again. <laughs> We've seen a lot of this of late. This is kind of the trade du jour. We used to see the other side of this. We used to see buying calls for more upside. The stock was pretty much actually a little bit higher when these went up. The stock was 85.12. So these are already going to be, unfortunately, bid in their face. So it's going to fail your compatriot, the Rock Lobster's first test. Are they a bid in your face? And the answer to these is, unfortunately for them, Yes, there are earnings, but not in the cycle of these options. The earnings next time are on February 24th. So Mr. Rock Lobster, or I should say, I keep saying it, Mr. Meatball, A, has this confluent come across your gamdar? And then B, what are your thoughts on this trade? And in particular, this kind of trend we're seeing lately of these crazy meme names exploding and then people coming in right behind it on the other side to kind of pick up pennies right after the steamroller has passed them by. Yeah, well, the stock's down nicely today. Uh, pretty aggressive sale, but that's not terrible premium to be short for you know for a week, uh, twelve bucks out of the money. So I don't I don't hate the the sale. Um, I think they're I would I would do it a little differently, but I understand what they're trying to do. They're thinking I can beat the clock and sell these at forty cents. And, uh, you know, collect a ton of premium and not have to worry about taking delivery on confluent after uh, after Thursday or Friday. That's true. The, the time does work in their favor. These are very near term. These are November in case I didn't say that listener. So they are very near dated. So that makes it a little bit better if they were selling, you know, December or something. Or God forbid, beyond, I would say you're taking your life in your hands. <laughs> but in this case, they only got to sit there and really stress for a week. But they they can stress because, as you've seen, this thing can move a lot in the span of a couple of sessions, including well south of that 75 strike. So we'll come back to these, see if they keep their full 40 cents listeners or if they perhaps had their proverbial face ripped off. We shall find out. Let's keep on rolling here. Let's go out to another newcomer. Fluor. Fluor Corp. Ticker symbol FLR. This is a multinational engineering and construction firm. Oh, headquartered not that far from you. In Irving, Tejas. Uh, they work predominantly in the oil and gas areas out there. Let's see. Trading right now, 2337 up. 
Let's see. I had a good year, but let's look at what's up today. Today up about a buck or about four and a half percent. So not a bad day either. A year ago, they were trading a little bit shy of that. They were trading 1420. And they rallied all the way up to pretty much looks like their 52 week high was right around 25 bucks. And that came in May, May 7th or so. So they rallied from 14 bucks in November all the way up to about 25 in May. And they sold off pretty sharply back down to 17. By the end of May, they're trading 17 bucks again. And they kind of kept trending lower. They had some fits and starts along the way, but mostly trending lower until it looks like September 21st, where they bottomed out, looks like at around their 52 week low of about 13, actually 1480. The 52 week low was 1312. That must have come pretty much exactly a year ago. It must have been on November 16th. <laughs> uh, and then it looks like they closed at 1420 that day. And then on 14, September 21st, they got down to about 1460 or so before starting the next leg of their upward trend. They've pretty much been all up ever since then. They've gone from 1460 to 23 bucks on the 5th and 2337 again today. So nice upswing ever since September. Let's see what our eye of Sauron has found out here. Are they scooping up calls to bet on continued upside? Are they perhaps drawing more lines in the sand? Are they doing something else crazy? Let's find out. It looks like oh, we're back to what we're just talking about. <laughs> selling puts after a rally we got the dece dece these are expiring on the 10th so these are in the weeklies uh what do we got 20 puts going up for 20 cents this time hitting the bid no playing around with it uh 3610 times and let's see these are it's about a 50 vol if you are wondering listeners and the stock was a little bit lower stock was 2296 when these went up so stock has rallied a little bit so these Looking a little bit better. There are no earnings in this cycle. The next announcement is on February 25th. So it looks like we got a little bit of post earnings. Just taking a little bit of yield off the table. Mr. Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts on these line in the sand puts in everyone's favorite name and your Texas neighbor, Fluor? Fluor. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, you know, this is another one where it's a uh, looks like a, a yield play. Uh, looking to, you know, collect 1% of the value between now and December or take delivery. Kind of an interesting one. Doesn't have earnings. Uh, but, uh, you know, someone's saying, hey, you know, this is a, a level that I think things are too cheap and was, uh, you know, just odd. Hence the name of the segment, the odd block. Let's see. We'll put that in our to be watch category as well. You got so many trades to to catch up on. Speaking of which, let's let's pay off one of those now. Let's go back to September 13th. In particular, this is a good old Constellium. Constellium brands. How do I remember these listeners? Because they are the manufacturers of rolled aluminum. <laughs> I'm sure you could recall me saying that once or twice on the show. That's why I love when this name comes up. It gives me a chance to say aluminum. The British just say it so much better than us. September 13th. We talked about what we thought was a pretty reasonable line in the sand put sale in everyone's favorite rolled aluminum manufacturer, Constellium Brands here, and the ticker symbol CSTM. I won't tell you where they're trading right now, a bit of a spoiler. At the time, back on September 13th, so nigh over two months ago, we saw 5,750 of the October expiring on the 8th. So these are in the weekly. So these have been in the books for a while here. 18 puts going up. Right off the bid for 23 cents. That was about a, almost a 50 ball, about a 48 and a half ball. So not bad for a manufacturer of rolled aluminum. The stock at the time was about 20 and a quarter when these puts went up. Looks like they dodged the bullet on earnings. Their trade expired on the 8th. The earnings were on October 27th. So they didn't want anything to do with the earnings out there. Looks like they picked up from this trade right around $130,000 in premium. So not nothing. And it seems like these ones worked out. Stock went out on the 8th at $19.20. Let's look really quickly and see if it ever really flirted with that level between uh, September. Looks like the lowest it got was after expiration. So they got out of Dodge at the right time. <laughs> the stock got down to seventeen thirty one on the 25th of October. So if they had traded through the earnings announcement, perhaps would have been wearing it a little bit. But then it rallied right afterwards. Right now it's trading 19 and a quarter again. So that was a brief blip there to 1730s, up about two bucks from that level now. So even if they did go in their face, if they waited a couple of sessions, it would have come back for them. So 
they had a brief flirtation if there was longer term, but in their in their time frame, the stock never really threatened the 18 handle at all. So they kept looks like they kept their full a buck thirty. All these puts were still open at expiration. So Mr. Meatball, a little bit of an early pre-earnings harvesting of the old premium in some rolled aluminium. Looks like they kept all their money, sir. What say you? Yeah, good for uh, good for them. Uh, you know, they sold those puts, stayed above, kept their money, and that is the whole goal of a put. This is exactly all those cheapy puts. The reason why they do it is because they're likely to keep the dollars, and it looks good until one of these absolutely blows through the bottom, and they've got egg on their face. Let's see if you guys put egg on our faces with some of your questions. It is time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. Let's get to it. Let's dive deep. Let's see what you folks have on the brain. Before we get to that really quickly, let's pay off the question we had last week. A hot and fast and furious one. A lot of boats were coming in all over the place, which is fun to see. But also, clearly, people had not been listening to the show for the earlier days, not even that early, like a few years ago on the show, because we, we made the answer to this one pretty clear in terms of what is pretty much in any given month, any given cycle, you know, there's a 99.9% probability that the largest open position in Tesla options is going to be some ridiculous, I should say, quote unquote, catastrophe put, you know, the one put, sometimes it's the 10 strike, but usually it's the one strike, something ridiculous. We've talked about it many times. You used to have a whole segment on the show about it, you know, breaking down the Tesla catastrophe puts. There's clearly someone who's out there probably selling uh, credit default swaps against Tesla and then just hedging that last little bit <laughs> of premium. Shows how much they're selling these things for. They could afford to waste all that money. They were there. And that's pretty much was the case when we did this poll as well. We asked you what's the largest open options position in Tesla. We started with calls for a reason. We knew that would lure you in, and it did. The March 2023 2000 calls Got nearly half of the vote, about 46.8% of the vote, followed by number two, the November expiring last Friday, the 12th, 1,000 puts, 30.5%, no joy there. Uh, number three was was the savvy folks, the June 2022 $1 puts, which was, as I said on Bob Views on Friday, the actual winner. And then number four were the Jan 2024 1,400 puts, 9.2%, by the way, 13.5% for the actual winner. So 13.5% of you fall into the savvy category out there this past week. And again, this is something that just pay attention to when you're listening, listening to the show and looking at these options. You know it's going to be Tesla has crazy, crazy paper, but you know it's going to be those one or maybe the 10 puts. If you ever do these polls again, you see some cheapy put on there. Pick that one. That's going to be typically the answer. I think at the time we ran it, it was something like 140,000 of these things open. It was far and away much more than the next closest strike, which I do believe was another one crappy strike put somewhere and had about 80,000 open. So yeah, those two together, you had almost not quite quarter of a million close to it in terms of just size, open interest on just crappy nonsense strikes. So everyone thinks calls, but that's not the case in Tesla land. All right. And actually this week's question, going back to the vol, this is always a fun one for us. We did it recently and some people got a little bit flummoxed by it. They didn't really figure it out. So we're going to do it again. We changed it up this time though, threw a little bit of a monkey wrench in for this week. We're asking you, let's, let's talk about volatility. It's on everyone's mind these days. Specifically, which of these tradable products is the most, in caps, the most volatile right now? We say, you know, no cheating. Don't look it up. Use your gut. We gave you four choices. The aforementioned Tesla. It's always got to be in one of our vol polls, right? Also, Bitcoin. That's always got to be in a vol poll. The newcomer to the poll this time, NatGas. Interesting. Interesting one to add in there. Kind of throwing a bit of a wrench in this time. Bit of a curveball. What do you think of that one? And then our old friend, the VIX. Coming in at the bottom of the list. Now, what do we mean by volatile? There's a lot of different definitions. We're just going to keep it pretty straightforward. Kind of front month at the money vol right now. What is the highest level? That's pretty much it. Uh, So nothing crazy, nothing outlandish. Votes already coming in. This went live right before showtime. Uh, Mr. Meatball, if you have a vote, have at it. But more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for right now, sir? Which of these products is the most volatile? Tesla, Bitcoin, Nat Gas, or VIX? Well, uh, right now the answer is clearly Tesla. I'm going to say the audience is voting for Bitcoin. Our audience is actually nicely split, which is fun to see. 
You've got the winner right now, 33.3%, so exactly a third for NatGas, which if you listen to Twifo, you know is a pretty volatile product. Number two is Tesla at about 29.2%. And number three is Bitcoin, also a pretty volatile product at 20.8%. And bringing up the rear, interestingly enough, is VIX, 16.7%. I shall not say what the answer is, because what fun would that be? we got a whole week to play. Get over there at Options. If you have not done so already, listeners, let us know what your vote is. Uh, let's see. Since we're doing an early mail block this week, we'll get some more of you on. Let's go to Tom from Telluride. Well, hello, Tom. I love when you say where you're from, too. That just, that just allows us to put it in context for you. So Tom from Telluride wants to know, I'm interested in taking a class slash understanding slash dissecting the math behind the Black Shoals model. Where can I find this? So you want to take a class in the math of the Black Shoals? You know, it's funny, Tom from Telluride, that you would ask this, because this used to be a very fundamental component of options education. You know, when we first walked on the trading floor, you know, they would hand us our Natenberg Bible, you know, options, volatility, and pricing. And a big component of that is the Black Shoals model. You had to understand how it worked, where it was derived from, all these things. These days, it seems like that has kind of fallen by the wayside a bit. You don't get a lot of instruction into, you know, the, this formula, what, it, what, it, what comes out of it, how you derive the Greeks and things like that. Seem like that has kind of moved by the wayside. I kind of understand that, you know, the actual understanding of it. Look at what we're seeing going on out there right now in the options market. It's this explosion of upside call buying across the board. I think these people are studying the Greeks and studying the derivations of the Black Shoals before they're doing that. Probably not, because if they did, they probably would see it's it's a pretty low probability trade. But they're doing it and it's working. So we're in that kind of weird time where Black Shoals kind of has fallen by the wayside. So an interesting question. I have some thoughts. First, Mr. Meatball. You guys have a lot of classes. I'm not sure if you have a class dissecting the Black Shoals model, but it, maybe if you do, you, you can tell them. But also, do you have another recommendation for where Tom from Telluride can go to learn more about the Black Shoals model, sir? You know, there's stuff on YouTube and there are books. And, you know, I think there's a book out there where you can literally build the Excel model in, or the Black Shoals model in... Um, uh, uh, in Excel. So, uh, but it's not something that I spent a lot of time building. And I think a lot of the modeling has actually moved beyond Black Shoals and into, you know, so, uh, some more ways to do it. But, uh, you know, that I would say read a book. Yeah, that's kind of uh, one of the best ways to go. You're right. First off, I think a lot of people have moved beyond Black Shoals. There are many other different ways to price options out there these days. If you want to dive deep into it, you could search a lot of the archives. You go to a place like Wilmot. Yeah, it's a very much a financial mathematics and modeling area. Even some crazy obscure corners of Reddit and other places will talk deep about the financial modeling and derivation of formulas like this. So if you search for it, you should be able to find it. There are, of course, like I said, the early books like Natenberg and others that go deep into this kind of stuff that you could do. If you want to dive deep and take an actual, you know, financial mathematics, but there are a bunch of those courses that, that would apply, of, imply, of course, taking an actual course and signing up for it and all the things that are involved in that. Maybe you don't want to do that, but I would start with some of those books and kind of searching some of those forums, some of those mathematical kind of modeling areas like Wilmot and others, and you probably could find a lot of good info. But yeah, this is kind of old school options math. You don't see this discussed that much. Maybe we need to do, um, I don't know, if we do this on boot camp, though, it'll probably blow people's minds. So maybe maybe we won't do it, but maybe we'll touch on some of the origins there just for fun. All right, let's squeeze in one more here. Let's go out to uh, J4340. He writes in every now and then. That handle looks familiar. He says, hey, Mark, any chance you think you could get the Oracle of New Hampshire to add something to the earnings season report? I was thinking seeing the standard deviation of implied versus actual move would be interesting to see if it is the whole market having a similar move or a handful of firms skewing the data. Also, an up versus down move metric would have been really interesting to see this season as well. Thanks. You know, we get a lot of requests for these, Jay. I'll certainly can put yours in the hopper to them. Uh, we're not in a rush to inundate them with a lot of requests because obviously Matt and his team, they're busy doing their actual jobs, which people pay them for a lot of this data and that sort of thing. So we're not in a rush to say, hey. Give us even more free data for our listeners. You guys get a lot of free stuff from them already. So we're not looking to ramp up the level of work they're doing. That said, they did just add a whole new report for you folks. That is the earnings 
uh, the earnings trade results report. So check that out. That's great data there as well. I will float this up to them. Again, they, they have a lot of things going on, so I don't know if we can expect to see that added anytime soon, but they love your feedback. So I'll make sure to let them know as we keep on rolling right on into the Around the Block segment. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. Look at that, Mr. Meatball. You and I gassing on for an hour. Who needs Uncle Mike, sir? We did it all by ourselves. We did. Are you proud? Are you proud of yourself? You gave yourself a gold star for today. I think that, you know, I think what we should have done is proven that Mike is completely unnecessary. Yes. <laughs> and we should just ban him from the show. He is completely vestigial to the show at this point, and we shall kick him loose to the curb with Uncle Mike and his anti-crypto stance and his just general sometimes missing of wrestlers that he should get. There we go. <laughs> nana nana boo boo to you. All right, Mr. Meatball, since you have pride of place today, you have pride of the only place. What is catching your eye out there? What are you keeping an eye on to our next show on Thursday? You know, uh, I, I, I let off the top of the show with it, and I'm going to leave the bottom. Uh, bond market, bond market, bond market, because uh, that that bond dump midday that sent markets lower is something eyebrow-raising and something to keep an eye on. And then, of course, we have a host of earnings, and you know, I don't think it's a heavy data week, but uh, we also have VIX expiration on Wednesday and regular options expiration on Friday to keep us busy. And that music means we have to be busy somewhere else. But don't worry, listeners. We shall return in about an hour to dive deep into the world of crypto. Will we get to these NFTs? Who knows? We'll be joined by the folks from Crypto Patterns. If you know me, you know I'm not the biggest of technicals. Technical strategist, technical analyst, technicals fan out there. But that said, they do seem to work a heck of a lot better in crypto than they do in other asset classes. Probably because there are no real other valuations to interfere with them. There's no fundamentals. There's no nothing else you can really look at from a crypto perspective except for technicals. So it's like I've said many times, technicals are a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people do them, they will work. And it seems like that is the case in crypto. So stay tuned for that. Should be pretty fascinating stuff. See what levels we're seeing out there in the exploding world of Bitcoin and ETH and everything else out there. But before we get there, Mr. Meatball, if folks want to hit you up, talk about the Gamdar, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Yeah, go to OptionPit.com and uh, join us. Read our VIX Edge blog every day, read the Pit Report. We're putting out amazing content on a daily basis. OptionPit.com and subscribe to those newsletters. Subscribe indeed, OptionPit.com. And he's not here, but I'll be kind. I'll give him a plug anyway. He is the uncleist of Mike's. You can find him, of course, at stcharleswealth.com. Call us, give him a follow on the old Twitters as well, at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W. He tells me, he hints, he's be putting out more content there going forward. So give that a follow while you're at it as well. We got to get on out of here back again later today, about an hour, less than an hour now. For the crypto rundown, back again tomorrow. You guys have all sorts of questions about crypto and options. We got a great guest for it, our old buddy, Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill Uliberry from Seneca Capital Management, a.k.a. old school market maker from the SIBO. Deep, hardcore covered call guy turned crypto aficionado. So how do those two worlds collide? You can ask him all your questions, not just about covered calls and how they work and options analytics and everything else like that that he's a great source for, but also you can ask him about all things crypto. He's deep into that these days, so it's interesting to see how those worlds intersect. That'll be tomorrow's pro Q&A. Back again on Wednesday for your double dose of education, options, boot camp, options, playbook, radio. Then back again on Thursday, episode two of the Option Block. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options. 
DocTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.